Okay, Fox 5 Health News, despite all the warnings, many people still cannot seem to get enough sun. Now a new study finds that there is a genetic link to tanning addiction. Joining us now, Dr. Doris Day, clinical associate professor at NYU Medical Center. Thank you so much for being here. You can be addicted to tanning? Well, if you like being tanned, you better love being wrinkled. We know that both <laughs> wavelengths of light... That's such a smart way to talk people <laughs> right? out of it, by appealing to their vanity. That is that's true. It works. That's why I love mm -hmm. what I do. Mm -hmm. But we know that all wavelengths of UV radiation are known carcinogens. Enough exposure will lead to cancer. Mm -hmm. But some people have a harder time weaning off mm -hmm. the tanning than others. And what scientists did is they took saliva from about 80 people who showed signs of addiction to tanning and about 200 people who liked to tan but didn't show those signs of addiction. And what they found was that there is a gene that kept coming up in those people who had a harder time not going tanning, who had that uh -huh. addiction. And it seems like it releases these feel-good hormones called endorphins. And those hormones make it much more difficult. Doesn't mean you can't give up tanning, it just makes it right. harder to do. Was this study conducted on the Jersey Shore? I was just gonna say, those guys couldn't help themselves, GTL. Steve. Right. <laughs> So no, that but makes it, it hard. It's interesting. You know, it seems like the more we study, the more we learn, everything comes down to these addiction genes. And I mean, right. But that's not an excuse to have bad behavior. Sure, it just means no. you need to be more aware. And then if you exercise or did other things that released endorphins, that would make you feel good too. Gotcha. But that's not as much fun, right? right. I love the way she yeah. frames it, though, because <laughs> it's so hard to stop wanting to lay out in the sun. You start thinking about the, the wrinkles you're going to see on your face. Right. To appeal to the vanity. You probably incentive. think you look good with that a tan, works. but it's not going to look so good down the road. All right. No. And, and also, another study talking about. Uh, when you eat and the amount of hours you eat during the course of a day could have a huge impact on whether you gain weight or not. That's so true. So what you eat doesn't matter as much as when you eat. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they took mice and they put them on one of four diets. Mm -hmm. One was a high fat diet, one was a high sugar diet, one was a high fat and high sugar diet, and the other was just mouse kibble. And what they found was that the mice that had an, a window in which they could eat, a nine hour window or a 12 hour window, mm -hmm. they tended to maintain their weight much better than mice that were allowed to eat any time they wanted. So when you eat all the time, whenever you're awake, you feel like eating, you eat, that's a problem. They had higher rates of obesity, right. higher rates of diabetes and other problems. But when they were Regardless restricted they to were a 12-hour window, day, right? wow. then those mice, even if they cheated once in a while on a weekend, even the mice were allowed to cheat once in yeah. a while, even those mice did better than mice that ate all the time. So if you pick out a 12-hour window, and the reason why this is probably is because you have a circadian rhythm. Your body has a cycle. And when you eat, sets that circadian rhythm even more than day and night cycles. Wow. So right. if you pick that 12 hours, 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night as your eating time, then you're much better off, even if it's 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Just pick your 12-hour right, window. Just pick the window. That's okay. It. Is it and still okay to graze throughout that window? Though? Like, I like to eat a yes. little bit often. Is Anything that okay? during, during all those the hours, mice in all the fine. categories, high right. fat, high sugar, high fat and high sugar, or mouse kibble, all had the same number of calories, and none of these mice exercised. So this was just pure calories, pure time right. of eating, and that 12-hour window mattered more than the amount of calories, than the amount of exercise. And the window starts when you have your first cup of coffee. That's so right. it's not necessarily oh, just the first food. food. It's whenever you start That's right. consuming anything. I think we should test this out this weekend. Set a window, not work out all weekend long, and see what happens. <laughs> well, I'll, well the no working out thing health. will be fine. <laughs> no, so you want to optimize health. You want to set your window so you know that you can maintain yeah. your weight and so that everything else you do will work to your best advantage. Really makes sense to me. You hear a lot of it's ter and, and all the acid if you eat too close to bed. All of it's bad for you. You've got to give yourself some time before you go to bed. And That's right. That all Makes sense. All right, Dr. Doris Day. Thank you. Thanks Thank you very much.